Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic out there. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about slats, slots and flaps. What are they? What do we use them for? Why do they exist in the first place? And in what circumstances are we using them? So stay tuned to the end. You are going to love this one. So, slat, slot, leading edge devices, what is it? All right, I'm gonna try to, to, to start by explaining a little bit why we have them. So, a modern airliner is built to be able to fly very fast at very high altitude, all right? That requires very little drag. Now, the thing is that in order for us to be able to take off and land at fairly short runways, we need to be able to extract quite a lot of lift out of the wings at very low speed. Now you cannot do both of those things at the same time. You cannot have a wing who is both good at, um, at giving a lot of lift at low speed and being very efficient at high speed. And the way that that has been solved is by being able to essentially change both the shape and the size of the wing mid-flight. Pretty much like what birds do when they change the, uh, the f- their feathers, when they kind of move their feathers in order to change the curvature of their wings. The way that we do that with modern airliners is that we use what's called high lift devices. Now high lift devices are consisting of trading edge flaps which are extended and moved downwards on the back of the wings, leading edge flaps which moves out and forward on the front of the wing, and leading edge slats which extend out from uh, from the surface of the front of the wing. Okay. By doing that, we are essentially shaping the wing from being fairly flat and very, very uh, streamlined like this until getting a more curved shape like that and also being extended, so it's much bigger. And while we have these extended, they also create quite a lot of drag, which is good during, for example, an approach where we want to be able to descend at a fairly steep angle in that case you need drag in order for the aircraft to not accelerate and it's also good uh, in order to be able to take out a lot of lift during that crucial takeoff acceleration because for a couple of reasons most runways are not longer than maybe two two and a half kilometers we need to be able to accelerate up to get enough speed during that little time to get the aircraft airborne and also our wheels cannot spin at a higher speed at approximately 195 to 200 knots. If they spin quicker than that, they will actually explode. So we need to be able to get the aircraft airborne before that happens. So there are many, many factors that need to be taken into account. Now, what we do is we use flaps, normally flaps one or five for departure. And we use the higher flap settings, flaps 30 and 40 generally, for landing because flaps one and flaps five creates a lot of lift but not that much drag which is great for the sake of flaps 30 and 40 create both a lot of lift and a lot of drag which is great when it comes to coming in steeply landing and then braking in order to stop on a short runway okay so that's the essentials that's why we have flaps in the first place now to explain how they actually work um, the Lead, if we start with leading edge flaps, on the 737 we have something called Kruger flaps. Basically they work by m- extending outwards from the wing, changing the curvature of the wing, the, um, uh, and also extending the, the size of the wing, the, the wing surface. right? So they are situated inboard of the engines, so between the body of the aircraft and the engines. There you will see the, uh, the Kruger flaps and there's one on each wing. Outside of the, uh, the engine pylons you have the leading edge slats. Okay? Slats are essentially just a piece of the wing that is moved outwards. Using hydraulic pressure they're being moved outwards and they extend the surface of the wing once again to gain more lift out of it. Okay. Then you have the trailing edge uh, flaps. They are controlled with this little lever down here. And the trailing edge flaps, they uh, control the movement of the leading edge slats and slots. So the leading edges, they don't actually have any individual controls. They are moved in relationship to the trailing edge flaps. 
So with flaps one, five, you will have the leading edge flaps, so the leading edge slats partially extended. Okay. With the flaps moved from five to ten, then you get full extension of the leading edge devices. That means that from flaps five to flaps ten, there's a quite high difference in drag. You get much more drag from flaps ten than you get from flaps five because of the movement of the leading edge devices. And that can be good when you, for example, want to slow down in before a landing. Then, as you select the flaps down to the bigger flaps, uh, trailing edge flap setting, more and more of the flaps will actually extend from the back of the wing. And while they're doing that, more and more of the slots are being shown. Okay, slots are actually openings between the different stages, between the different segments of the trailing edge flaps, and also in between the leading edge slats and the wing, that allows a little bit of air to run through and that air extends the boundary layer that makes the trailing edge flaps and slats sorry the trailing edge flaps and leading edge slat more efficient now i'm not going to go into the basics of the aerodynamics there you're going to have to look that up yourself but this is how they work so the more the bigger of a surface the trailing edge flaps have the more sla slots are going to need to be entered and i'll show you some pictures of that here okay so those um, those slots are actually making the uh, trailing edges and leading edges more effective. That's what they are. Um, it, it's unfortunate that they have so similar names, but those are slots, the leading edges are slats, and then you have the trailing edge flaps and the leading edge flaps. Right. Cool. So how do we actually use them then? Like I was saying, flaps 1 and 5 are normally used for takeoff. You can use flaps 10, flap 15, and even flaps 25 for takeoff as well if you need to be able to take off on a very short takeoff distance. Okay. Uh, for landing, we use flaps 30 or 40. Or, if we're single engine, we can use flaps 15. Now, if you have a look down here, you will see that there are gates at flaps 1 and flap 15. And we'll get to that in a second. For landing, we need to be able to, uh, to re reduce the speed. Okay, um, We want to do that because we want to land at a short landing distance. And what we tend to do is we start by reducing the speed back to our up speed. So that will be on the speed tape here. You will have a little bug saying up, and that's the lowest speed that you can safely fly without any uh, high lift devices being extended. So we start by reducing speed back to then. Then the pilot flying will call for flaps one. The pilot monitoring needs to check that the speed is correct, that we're not exceeding any, any uh, flap limits, because they are flap limits. And if that's the case, they will respond with speed checks, flaps one. Select the flaps to one and then monitor that the flaps is extending like it should be and that the leading edge flaps are also extending like it should. And when they are out, the pilot monitor will respond with flaps one. Pilot flying can then continue with selecting or asking for flaps five. Same thing applies. Speed check. Select it. Flaps five. That normally happens at about 13 miles out from, uh, from the landing. Okay, At about 10 miles, we need to have a minimum of flaps one. And then we continue, we capture the glide slope and start descending on the glide with normally flaps five. Down to a distance of either four or five nautical miles, depending on um, what the weather is like. We, we can go a little bit further, a little bit closer to the runway without selecting our landing flaps if the weather is good, if we see the runway. If the weather is poor, well then we take it out a little bit earlier. So let's say that the weather is poor now. At five miles, the, cap, the pilot flying is gonna call for gear down, flap 15, Complete the landing checklist down to flaps. Pilot monitoring, once again verify, speed checks, gear down, flap 15, we have the speed limits here, and then they start to challenge the landing checklist. When we get down to flaps, we wait there, let the speed decrease down to a maximum of 175 knots if we want to take flaps 30, or 162 knots if we want to take flaps 40, and then the pilot flying will call for Flaps 30 or 40, depending on what we're going to land with. Once again, the pilot monitoring checks the speed, selects the flaps. And the last part of the landing checklist is flaps and landing lights. So flaps is going to be challenged. We verify that we have selected or chosen flaps 30 for the landing. So we verify that from the FMC and call out flaps 30, 30 and a green light. That means that we now know that we have the flap selection that we calculated our landing distance based on when we did the um, the um, approach briefing earlier on, which I'm going to do in a separate podcast. Right? Then we come in, 
complete the checklist, land. All the checklists have to be completed and all the flaps have to be selected and the speed. So the thrust has to be come up so that everything is stabilized by an absolute minimum of 500, not, uh, 500 feet. At 500 feet, everything needs to be stabilized. The only thing that we can do after 500 is put the landing lights on, which would be the indication that uh, we've been clear to land. So that's how we would do it. We'll come in and land. Now, if anything would happen, so let's say that we have to do a go around. Maybe the runway is blocked. Maybe we don't see the runway at our minimums. Well, in that case, the pilot flying will press the toga button, which is located here on the thrust lever. Press toga, set go around, flap 15, set go around thrust. With the positive rate, we will select the gear up. At 400 feet, we will select the roll mode. Okay. So this, the pilot monitoring then checks that everything is correct, selects the flaps to 15, and, uh, and verifies that all of the actions during the go-around is being, being done correctly. Now, this is if you have a two-engine go-around. If you have a single-engine go-around, it's different. A single-engine go-around, you will already be doing the approach at flap 15, a slightly lower flap setting, so you have to go from flap 15 to flaps 1. So that's the difference. If we are doing a normal two-engine uh, approach, we go from flaps 30 or 40 to flap 15. If you're doing a single-engine approach, you go from flap 15 to flaps 1. And that's what these gates are for. So make sure that under stress, when this is happening, we're not going past these gates because we need that amount of flaps in order to fly the aircraft safely. The flaps are there to give us as much lift as we need in order to fly the aircraft safely during these uh, phases of the approach. So guys, essentially that is what flaps it. We can go in and I'm going to go into the different procedures and how we use the flaps and stuff in later podcasts. And if you want to see how we set things up during the departure, for example, the performance and everything, I recommend you to buy the, um, the full setup uh, collection in the Mentor Aviation app because in there I will show you everything including the performance calculations that we do in order to, to determine what flap setting we're going to use. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that one and I hope that you will be following the channel and that you are looking forward to more videos coming up. There's plenty of them. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.